If you're recording in an untreated room or have background noise, you better use a dynamic microphone for recording as they can reject ambient noise much more than condenser mics. Have you heard this myth before? And yes, I'm calling it a myth because it's not true. Well, it's kinda true, but not really. Let me show you. Hey, Julian Kras here, and you've probably heard this advice many, many times before. But how can it be true? Think about it. Why would a dynamic mic reject noise better than a condenser mic? It's not like the sound waves are traveling through the air and then when they're hitting a condenser mic, they're like, nice, I can be really loud here. Or when they're hitting a dynamic mic, they're like, oh, a dynamic mic, I have to be quiet. In fact, the sound wave does not know what it is hitting, nor does it care. In this video, I'm going to show you the real difference in noise rejection between condenser and dynamic mics, why there shouldn't be a difference and why there oftentimes is. And when I do the comparisons, I will focus on cardioid mics as they are the most popular type of microphones, both for condenser and dynamics. And they mainly pick up sound from the front and pretty much nothing from the rear. Of course, there are other types of microphones like omnidirectional mics, but we'll ignore these for now to make this an apple to apple comparison. Still, if you're curious what kind of a difference that makes, I have compiled several unedited audio samples at the end of the video with even more different microphone types. So stay tuned for that. Back on track, as I've mentioned from a physical perspective, dynamic microphones simply cannot reject noise better than condenser mics. It's just not possible. The underlying working principle of these microphones is kinda similar. Of course, there are some differences, like, don't get me wrong here, but in the end, it's just sound wiggling a membrane, which results in an electrical signal that we can record. And the sound does not care whether it's hitting a condenser mic or a dynamic microphone. Sound pressure is sound pressure, so that's why I said in the beginning of the video that it's impossible for there to be a difference in these two types of microphones in terms of background noise rejection. Oh, and quick side note, you may have also heard the saying that the sound falls off quicker the further you get away from a dynamic microphone compared to a condenser. But if you think about it for a second as well, this is also physically impossible. If you move the microphones further away from a sound source, the sound pressure will drop the same amount for both types of microphones. And you can actually see this here in a small experiment where I move the microphones back from a speaker. You can see that the sound pressure measured by both microphones dropped by pretty much the same amount. So no, dynamic mics do not have a faster fall off in terms of distance to the sound source compared to condenser mics. That's simply not possible and would break the laws of physics. And that's not allowed here. Okay, with that out of the way, I want you to listen to these two recordings. One is from a dynamic mic and one from a condenser mic. This was deliberately recorded in an untreated room and a bit further away from the sound source to make this a worst case scenario. I want you to listen to where you hear less room reflections. Here we go. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Shocking difference, right? Okay, to be honest, there's hardly any difference. Yes, the mics sound ever so slightly different, but in terms of rejecting the room reflections, both mics perform pretty much the same. So, a theory proven, they are the same, right? Well, not so fast. I have to confess I cheated a little bit. Mic A was the dynamic mic and mic B was the condenser, but mic B was EQ'd to sound as close to the dynamic mic as possible. I did that by measuring the frequency responses of both microphones and then used EQ to get them to a near perfect match. And on a side note, I was surprised that the mics sounded much more alike than I would have anticipated. Pretty cool to see that you can kind of mimic a dynamic mic with a condenser and some EQ. But that might be a topic for a whole separate video. The thing I want to drive home with this little test here is when you match the frequency response of a dynamic and a condenser mic, all of a sudden there is essentially no benefit anymore for the dynamic microphone in terms of rejecting the reverb of the room or ambient noise. All things equal, dynamic and condenser mics can have identical noise rejection capabilities. But let's face it, in the real world you probably use a dynamic or condenser mic because of their sound. And most of the sound characteristics come from their specific frequency response. So what happens when you don't EQ the mics to sound the same but listen to them raw? Is there any difference in how much you can hear the untreated room? Well, have a listen for yourself. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. Check. One, two, three. Check. One, two, three. 
In this example I had the mics closer to the sound source, which mimics a much more typical recording distance. But even then I think you can hear a difference. Granted, it's not a night and day difference, but there is a small advantage for the dynamic mic in terms of rejecting the reverb of the room. The reason for that is that on dynamic mics the higher frequencies tend to roll off earlier than on condenser mics. This gives condenser mics more treble extension and makes the mic sound a bit more open. But simultaneously this also captures more of the room's natural reverb and this will lead to you hearing more of the echo in the room. So this brings me to the first point why people experience a difference in how much a mic picks up the room. With dynamic mics rolling off earlier in the higher frequencies there's just not that much sound captured at very high frequencies and that includes the room's reverb. You simply cannot hear what isn't captured. Now to show you how big of an impact the frequency response has I have a bit of an anti-example here. Have a listen. Check. One, two, three. Check. One, two, three. Clearly you could hear much more reverb with the dynamic mic and the sole reason for that is that the specific mic I used in the test has a much more boosted high frequency range. So this shows that only because it's a dynamic mic it does not directly make it better at background noise rejection. This mic is definitely a bit of an outlier, but it shows how much of an influence the frequency response of a mic has on the perceived ambient noise rejection. And it also shows that the overall frequency response is much more important than the type of microphone. That said, because dynamic microphones on average have a more rolled of high frequency response, this can lead to an audible benefit in terms of suppressing the room reverb. But there's actually one more point which is equally important and it also explains why dynamic mics tend to reject ambient noise more. By the way, now is the perfect time to subscribe before I dive in deeper. Click the button and ring the bell, this really helps me out. The second point has to do with the usage of microphones, especially with the distance of mics. Pretty sure it's pretty obvious, but here's a small sound sample of the microphone at different distances to the sound source. Check. One, two, three. Check. One, two, three. As expected with a mic further away, the direct sound from the sound source is lower and the room reflections and noise are much louder in comparison. Also with the mic closer, the mic gets more bassy, which also tends to mask a bit of the room's reverb. By the way, this effect is called a proximity effect and this affects a dynamic and condenser mics equally, so no difference in that aspect. But dynamic microphones generally have a lower output than condenser microphones and this often forces you to turn up your gain more on your preamp and people seem to be very conscious of this. One way to use less gain is to get the microphone closer. So with mics with a lower output, people tend to use those microphones closer to the sound source and that's exactly what we see with dynamic microphones. If we have a look at different recording setups all over the internet, you will find that on average people have dynamic microphones closer to whatever they are recording compared to condenser microphones. And I mean especially for vocal recording, dynamic mics often feature a built-in pop filter which allows you to use the microphone closer to your mouth without creating any nasty plosives. Condenser mics can oftentimes be more sensitive to plosives due to their extended low frequency response and this often forces you to use the mic slightly further away from you. Especially if you want to place a dedicated pop filter in between you and the microphone. Again, while technically speaking this isn't a difference in the two microphone technologies, but as dynamic microphones are generally used closer to the sound source, this is definitely one of the bigger contributing factors to the room rejection myth of dynamic microphones. Okay, so where does this all leave us? Technically speaking, dynamic microphones do not reject background noise or reverb of the room more than condenser microphones. Physics just won't let them. So should you stop recommending dynamic microphones for untreated or noisy recording spaces? Well, I think there is still some value in that. Because of the generally more limited frequency response of dynamic microphones and the fact that they are oftentimes used closer to the sound source, there can be a noticeable difference in the perceived ambient noise and room reverb. That said, I think you shouldn't expect any miracles and you will find that the noise rejection differences in real world scenarios is not nearly as big between dynamic and condenser mics as many people claim. Ultimately, how much of the room you will hear depends much more on the overall shape of the microphone's frequency response and the proximity to the sound source than whether it's a condenser or dynamic microphone. Alright, I hope this brings a bit of light into this sometimes misunderstood topic. Please subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to listen to even more sound samples to see how different mics can handle room reverb, I've recorded with a couple of different mics and will play them back to you completely unedited. I will leave you with that and I will see you all in the next one.
There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three. 
There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There's another theory which states that this has already happened. Check. One, two, three.